Hi, I'm Paul with American Hydroponics and welcome to our October webinar where we're going to give you a, a just a sample taste of what our quarterly uh, seminars are like. As you watch this webinar, if you have any questions, go ahead and send them in to us and we'll answer them the best we can. But on this webinar, you will get a taste of uh, some of our, our leading growers and uh, hydroponics specialists, uh, Joe Schwartz, uh, Jenny Harris, uh, Rudy Clark Lara. Um, they're all in this. These uh, seminars are wonderful times uh, for learning and you're going to see all phases uh, in this webinar. Also, I'd point out that um, coming up uh, at the end of the webinar, we have a special this month if you buy either of our powdered nutrients, Grow Mag or Big Bang Bloom, online, we'll give you 25% off. And that uh, is good for any size. Also, next month in, uh, in November, we are going to update and um, have a new webinar, How to Start a Hydroponic Business. And on YouTube, this has been our most popular webinar. And you'll want to see this as Jenny is going to talk about some new updated materials and this will be really good. This is going to be the third Thursday and that'll be November 15th. Also, we have another seminar coming up and that's going to be February 21st and 22nd in 2019. It's not too late to start planning to, uh, to get in on that seminar. It'll be here in Eureka and we will be running specials for that. Be sure to look for those. But anyway, uh, coming right up is a taste of our seminar, our most recent seminar that was just l held last week. So enjoy. If you have any questions, get a hold of us. What is the most valuable farming tool? Is it a tractor? Is it a rake? A cultivator? A computer? Well, it depends what, you're, what you need. So we want to try to remove ourselves from the mindset of a certain system or a certain configuration. What we really want to look at is, as growers, looking at, and as you, we saw, we have a very large diversity of uh, not only people, but what your, maybe your end goal is. Maybe you're trying to provide food to your local community. Maybe you're trying to run a successful business. Maybe you're just an investor looking to jump in on uh, a market condition that's, that's very, very hot and popular right now. And none of those are wrong. So you have to look at your own individual application. I mean, historically, the mythical hanging gardens of Babylon who are basically uh, based on the concept of, of directing irrigated water, or irrigation water uh, to certain areas to provide for the plants. Um, you know, indigenous people in South and Central America, especially were very well known, um, archaeologists have found very, very advanced uh, irrigation channels. Uh, so Fran uh, Sir Francis Bacon in the early 1600s, he was a scientist and philosopher. And whether he, he was looking at and whether he was talking about medicine or industry or architecture. He understood that there are certain natural laws. And this is something that I want you to all kind of try to, to, to keep in the back of your mind. And this is really what has always driven my philosophy in farming, <coughs> controlled environment agriculture, is that we have certain natural laws. And again, this, this applies to any industry. It's not just agriculture. But basically, with these natural laws, in order to achieve a goal, in order to manipulate our environment or our situation for our own benefit, we have to understand these natural laws and work with them. And one of the things that we will see and we'll talk about more today is um, shipping container farming systems or indoor vertical farming systems. And maybe you've seen online uh, things that look like carnival rides and merry-go-rounds with plants. And um, Though you'll start to see the flaws in systems like that because basically they may violate some fundamental laws of physics or of horticulture. And so what Mr. Bacon basically was saying, and he understood, and he drove a lot of the early um, uh, technological development in agriculture, is he understood that plants, through millions of years of evolution, have certain requirements for certain amounts of light, certain types of light, certain uh, moisture levels, oxygen levels, nutrient um, physical temperature, uh, carbon dioxide, all of these different parameters that we're going to talk about. And these are uh, certain things that exist in nature, but in order to achieve a certain result, we can enhance them, remove some of them, change some of them, improve some of them, all again to achieve a, a certain outcome. And greenhouse structure, the physical environment, these are actually several hundred years old. They started to under, people started to understand that we could actually um, protect ourselves and protect our plants from the elements using different structures and by using a uh, structure with a clear glazing that allows sunlight in 
we started to understand that we could develop uh, crop production, a either extend our growing season or grow completely out of growing season. And again, this fueled our ability to, to grow plants in other areas and really laid the foundation for what we're going to work on today. So controlled environment agriculture, obviously now, today, with high levels of technology, it allows us to really manipulate um, the, the growing environment that we provide for our plants for an end result. And we're going to talk about all the different levels of technology. But basically, um, what we're looking to do is to be able to grow crops, as Jenny said, in areas that necessarily weren't always suitable for agricultural production. Uh, this is actually, Go uh, is that Gotham? Yeah, it's Gotham Greens in New York City also. <coughs> this is another rooftop farm. And again, we're not promoting rooftop farms as the be-all, end-all. This is just um, one technique that uh, growers use in the middle. Um, this is actually Greenpoint, so this is right in the middle of Brooklyn uh, on a rooftop. And, and I was actually there about two weeks ago, and trust me, there is no farmland available. Uh, so, so basically, hydroponics, a lot of people, there's uh, some misnomers even now. People say, well, what's hydroponics? Oh, it's growing plants in water. Not exactly. Um, plants obviously require more than water, and it's not quite so simplistic as that. Basically, plants um, in their natural environment, as I said, they, they thrive under certain temperature uh, conditions. They have certain requirements for light. So basically, after millions of years of evolution, they've developed... Uh, the ability to produce their own food basically using the natural uh, ambient sunlight of their region. Well, we're able to, one, put, put crop production in other areas and provide some supplemental light. So we're actually able to, to uh, understand based on our crops what, what our, our lighting requirements are and what we can provide. Um, but in terms of the term hydroponics, which is basically literally in Latin, it's water working. It's using, it's using techniques to grow plants without soil. And as we go through the course of the day, we're going to understand why we, why we would want to do that. But basically, in the soil, plants get a few things. They get physical uh, support. The root systems, uh, part of the function of the root system is to, find, is to provide physical support of the plants, which hydroponic systems will do. And then also, um, all water and nutrient absorption happens, basically. So, so basically, everything the plant uh, obtains from the soil um, that they need for growth, we supply. So we supply all of the water pH uh, adjusted water, all of the nutrients, also the microbial activity. People think that hydroponics is sterile. Um, they, and one of the arguments that people talk about hydroponics is that, well, hydroponics isn't natural because in the soil, you have all this microbial flora in the soil. We have um, different beneficial fungus and bacteria. We have the same thing in hydroponics, and we want to manage that and encourage that because not only does that help plant the plants to assimilate nutrients and actually be more healthy, but it also helps remove <coughs> waste products from because the, the, one of the other functions of the root system is actually to remove metabolic waste products from the plant. And in the soil, again, microbes um, consume that, and they actually will stimulate, stimulate the plant to grow. And we actually also manage that in a hydroponic system. So, so again, commercial production, this is actually a large-scale facility in Southern California. Um, again, we are using all the different technological tools, and I hope you're starting to notice the differences in some of the greenhouses, and sometimes some of the growing systems look a little differently. And so we, uh, again, we're just applying different technologies. And we can explain a lot of these and, and feel free to, to jump in. But again, we want year-round growth. We want to be able to provide fresh local food um, or plant material. We'll talk about pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals as well. Um, 365 days a year. We want to be able to grow pesticide-free or with a minimal pesticide. Input, um, one of my primary drivers into uh, hydroponics was uh, my father and uncle ran a large potato growing operation. And my uncle died prematurely due to pesticide exposure, and my father um, became disabled at a fairly young age because of the physical demands and the physical dangers of farming. And so um, hydroponics and controlled environment agriculture allowed me production methods to grow year-round high-quality crops and not expose myself or the consumers to to pesticides, to um, the physical dangers of working in agriculture. One of the great job opportunities that we're going to probably talk about more tomorrow is that traditional farm labor is an entry-level, low-paid job that has essentially zero chance for economic advancement, that is extremely dangerous, um, that, that you see a lot of injuries, repetitive use injuries, illnesses, all related to farm work. So this is one of the challenges with getting young people involved in farming. Very, very basically, again, there are many different types of hydroponic systems, but this is the basic configuration of, of a 
hydroponic or recirculating hydroponic system. We're going to see those uh, later today. So we basically have a reservoir that holds our nutrient solution. Basically, this is water, uh, pH adjusted water, temperature adjusted water, water that's infused with dissolved oxygen. And then all of the nutritional elements that plants need for growth, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, calcium, et cetera, are all dissolved into this nutrient solution. So essentially, everything that a plant needs for, for proper growth is mixed in that. And it is then pumped out and sent out to the main growing system. And this is the component. This is what we've seen when we look at the uh, American hydroponic systems or any growing system. It's a, a physical support for the plant that allows this you know, oxygen-rich nutrient solution to flow by gravity through the system. That's why you see the channel here is slightly angled down, uh, slightly downward. So basically, the, by gravity, it flows and it's caught in a, a collection system and it's sent back down to the main tank. So basically, all the water and the nutrients that plants use are used, and nothing is wasted, and it allows very, very efficient use of all of our resources in a, in a quite simple system. This system looks like kind of an oversimplification, but essentially this is the fundamental foundation of all recirculating hydroponic systems. Okay, so we're going to take a look at um, just some systems, just because you've probably in your research or you, uh, as you're starting to research, you will hear lots more and more of these type of systems, and you'll think, Gosh, what are they? And that sounds super cool, and why didn't I think of that before? So we're going to kind of go through all the ones that are out there. There's, um, it, so hydroponic, as Joe mentioned, is just growing plants with this um, you know, nutrient-rich water. Um, there's NFT, which is, which is a type. There's vertical towers, and you saw a picture of that. There's vertical layer. So when you talk about vertical, you have to clarify. Whenever we're, we go someplace and we're asked about vertical, we're like, okay, do you mean vertical layers or vertical towers? There's a huge difference between them. Um, aeroponics is one. Deep water culture, you'll also hear it referred to as VWC or raft or ponds. Um, ebb and flood, aquaponics, which is what we were talking about with the fish feeding the, the plants and this, this relationship, container systems, indoor and greenhouse. And, and you can be successful. All of these things actually do grow. So let's just talk about hydroponics right now. So the pros, and we're just going to go through some of the pros and cons of each one of these things. Some of the pros of hydroponics are clearly what we've talked about and what is the number one thing that's going to come out whenever you talk to it, uh, talk about it or look into it, is the water savings, the nutrient savings, and the land savings. And we'll so basically, you would have one growing inside. It allows you to maximize the production. So before we get into the growing system, we'll talk about the actual structure. So um, polycarbonate uh, moves to the dug up. It's a very, very solid uh, material. Um, you're going to get through here is if there's any kind of algae or anything okay. like that. Um, so this one of the things Paul mentioned is if you don't want to start out growing, like the HCRE students aren't here during the summer. So um, we don't grow a full system during the summer because they're not here to work. So we just keep half of it running. Okay, so you wait until those are there before you start dealing with it. Pretty much. That's why she didn't want us to be sucking around and that, okay. that sort of thing. Why? Because of the energy that these... Well, she's a little too young right now. She just wants to make sure that there's enough set to start coming <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to make a lunch speech today? Is <laughs> now with the vacuum on, of course, there's suction in every hole. Just like that kid's game with a little silver ball, you try to get dropped in the, the hole. Even by hand is just fine. If you have to do five, ten, or twenty trays at a time, it will save your life. That was tedious. Yeah. So if you notice, there's an outline around the plate that shows basically the perimeter of the waste. So very, very careful. You can place it on top. Wow. Now carefully holding on to both the cedar plate and the oasis at the same time. 
Now, if we get everything right, we should have one seed in every hole. Tina, and the sticks and these different sticks right here, every planting, every day you plant, you use a different color. And the only reason you do it is to make it super easy. So I could go over there and say, I'm pulling up the red one. And the red one is nice and easy to pull up. So I don't have to check every single color and look and see what the date is. I can just say, I'm pulling up all the red ones. So this will fill one whole channel. The, this you want because we have the microtubes at either end of the channel. It doesn't matter which end, but this will go into the oasis on the end of the channel, on the last cube. So you just want to take this and start filling the, the channel. And then as they bring more family in, I'll give you the other ones to do. At a constant temperature. And I, if that is not enough to keep the, the greenhouse warm, the temperature, particularly at night, becomes too cool. We actually have a suspension heater that you see here. This is a natural gas fire. This is actually how most greenhouses uh, of this size keep their structures. Basically burns natural gas, heats the air, pushes the warm air into the horizontal airflow, and distributes it around the greenhouse. Very, very simple, very straightforward. Thanks for watching this webinar. Thanks for joining us. Um, and remember, the seminar happens over two days, and it's classroom work and a lot of practical work in a commercial greenhouse. So if you can join us in February, we'd love that. Otherwise, if you have any questions or comments, uh, send them to info at amhydra.com. We'll see you next time.